I'm going on it. Are, are there any general questions from the audience that maybe I haven't covered or we haven't talked about yet? Don't be shy. <laughs> Fabulous, ladies, over to you. I have a question for the kid. Yes? Uh, also, so like set, uh, skill set just, of skill Just give me one second. Yeah. Because everybody wants to With the, the I'm sorry, the lights, I can't see. I can make my name's name. I would like to know a little bit more about what many say that uh, a taxi driver uh, and after two and a half months he got recruited. So what was the journey? What platform people can uh, have uh, when they are they want to change their skill set or when they want to start at entry level? And so in a corporate, uh, sorry, <laughs> in a corporate uh, uh, yeah. setting. Yeah, for sure. So it wasn't really starting at the bottom as a trainee. After speaking with him, he had a petroleum engineer degree. And as I mentioned, we have a Flint management training program where he had a lot of transferable skills. So he had the experience in his country and there's, there was a lot of transferable skills. So the Flint management training program um, you would come in as an entry level, pay fairly well, but you're going to go through some of the corporate functions. So you're going to learn a little bit of project controls. You're going to learn about project management, a little bit of estimating. I'm going to teach you in recruitment how we hire in our organization. So what we're doing is we're taking that individual, we're putting them through our Flint management training program, and then graduating him into a project coordinator, and then moving up into a project manager. So that is what, you no, know, we have those roles currently open right now. Um, and sometimes those are the best. They, they have um, a great work ethic. They want to learn. They have this eagerness. Um, and so just chatting with the individual, I always ask everybody, the first question is, what is it that you do? Um, and that's just me. So um, yeah, he's, he's employed today. I spoke to somebody as well today. No, I'm not sharing the resume. And um, yeah, we are hiring again for these for these roles. So, uh, I guess also just to try and get your foot in the doors is you know do that research, right? So there's a lot of different industries out there that are hiring from a oil industry, from an energy sector. Um, get to understand you know what's upstream, what's midstream, what's downstream, right? What um, who are hiring? What 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 is it that, that you think you can transfer from, from the skills that you've learned and that you've developed? What do you like to do? Are you an outdoor person? Or do you rather sit behind a computer? Um, or do you like to interact with people? All these different things, again, contribute to what you can bring to the table. And when you do that education, you take that, that responsibility, um, and then maybe you set that research on that side of the, what that company does, then you become more prepared, right? So one of the biggest challenges that we have is setting expectations and managing those expectations with new hires and having people come in that for some reason they thought that they were going to be doing a certain type of thing and for what other for whatever reason they're, they're therefore not being fulfilled they're misunderstanding what they're supposed to be doing so really understanding what it is that um, that you make your issues in doing the good the bad the ugly right um, not every job is going to be fun every day unless you're working with you know us. Um, <laughs> but that being said, um, you know it's if, if you're not out for if you don't like to drive, if you are you know don't like to get dirty, um, if you love to work on equipment and you love to get dirty and try things new. Again, all those things are skills that you can bring to an opportunity. So I really do encourage everybody to take that responsibility, that accountability. Do the research, understand what opportunities are out there, and uh, and then that way when you come to the table, you can also have a, a good conversation, ask the right questions, so that you're also understanding what's expected of you. So make it a full circle, right? It's not just about us and asking you the right questions, but you need to also ask us the right questions, right? It's it's a personal decision for you, it's a business decision for us. So again, you may, you may make sure that you ask those questions so that you're sure that again. What's the lifestyle? If you have a family, if you have kids, um, are you going to be away from home? Um, all of those sort of things play a part. So, and that, that was really good um, because 
in terms of your lifestyle, um, there's roles that we have that you can work from home. So there is hybrid models, which means that, you know, you're working from home. Um, is it, do, do you want to do rotational work? Um, do you want to stay in a camp? Right, so I, I love that. So just ask the questions and then and then understand the expectations as well. So, and I think I would I would be remiss if I didn't add that there's a multitude of jobs in the service sector. So uh, I got you right. Uh, there's so we've got transportation. We have Flint here. We've got everybody down the supply chain from drilling. But there's also if you're looking at future state and you want to be involved in innovation and technology, the energy sector is by far one of the most innovative sectors out there. There's jobs in artificial intelligence and robotics, there's scientist jobs, there's medic jobs on site that a lot of people aren't aware of. So like everybody said, do some research and if you're having difficulty, my colleagues Josh and Jerry are in the audience and they'll be able to point you to our website because we do have a number of companies and the type of jobs out there uh, listed on the website so you guys can visit that as well. That's really good. Okay, sorry, I'll get you a mic. Go for it. Uh, okay, I am asking this question because I have faced this type of situation in several conversations. Uh, so there are so many people here, some might uh, uh, stay here as a citizen, some might come here as a peer, and some might come here as a uh, open work permit holder. So when you recruit, despite of having all the qualifications for your post, do you really think or do you really search that whether the applicant is peer or citizen or work permit? Because this question is kind of valid because the work permit holder you don't, you don't show that he will, he will continue, I mean, for the next five years or ten years. So do you really look for that person with uh, what permit for it? Hi. So we, so in the past I've had experience with uh, open work permits, um, landed immigrants, um, so yes, we would apply. So if you came and you told us that you have an open work permit, then we actually have a process that we apply to then take on your work permit. So we do, we do, we hire, right now we're, we're looking at a, a process. I have mine, tell me, acquisition strategy is the name audience. We are actually looking at a different process to kind of fast track it. So we're, we're looking now, like, we need business. Like, we need to start fast tracking um, how can we get uh, newcomers in the door quicker as opposed to this is taking forever and we're still waiting. So, yes, we have hired in our organization folks that are applying to be a permanent resident, uh, folks that have an open work permit, I have been with uh, other midstream companies where we have brought in thousands of temporary foreign workers as well. Um, so we do have that process. We're just looking right now on how we can fast track this. So, and I know some organizations don't, unfortunately aren't able to facilitate that depending on the size of the company um, to be able to sponsor and work with people with open work permits. Um, you know, for, for my past experience with my current company, Sanjo, um, if a person does have a, an open work permit, you know, we will provide the supporting documentation for you to reapply um, and to ensure that, again, that you're le legally allowed to work in Canada. Um, so, again, it's, it's a good question to ask when you are talking with a recruiter or talking with the company to find out what, um, what they'll be able to support you with. And being able to, and this is, you know, not everybody's educated when it comes to uh, foreign workers, and open work permits and residency status, etc. So also bringing that information to the meeting so that you can educate that person just in case they don't have that information so they understand what you need potentially as, as them as the employer and then therefore they can do their due diligence and find out what they're able to do to, to assist you. So it's a good 
good talking good point. Question. For sure. yeah. But yeah, that is that's a great question. Thank you. Actually, my question, hi, my name is Marisa. Actually, my question is related with his question. Because you say that you had a lot of training or opportunities for training. Uh, but my question is those opportunities are only for temporary residents? Oh, sorry, for permanent residents or also for temporary residents? Because maybe the company don't want to invest on temporary residents. I think it depends, right? I think yes. it's that conversation you need to have. Right, and if it's if it's temporary um, uh, status that you have in Canada, um, you know, when you go through the hiring process, the onboarding process, the the system will know that you're you're a temporary resident of uh, of Canada. So we'll need to do our due diligence and see what your visa is and etc. And when it expires, but you need to have that conversation so that both parties can manage expectations for yourself and for them. Um, and if things change, again, what kind of support do you need from your employer? And are they able to provide that support for any application that you might be pursuing? Right? So it, it's, it, it will always be a challenge, right? Because it's a, it's a government process. And it's, you know, when you talk about being expedite, um, it's a little bit different when you're trying to expedite the government. Um, so uh, that being said, again, having that conversation and managing you know what what your thoughts are what you're what you need and then ensuring that the employer can provide that so anything i would add just on the government point of view it's so for a survey we're, we're currently working with the federal government to help expedite and do um, an exemption so just for the energy service supply and manufacturing sector so that we can get more people through the process faster than having to wait the regular channels right now so oh that's really good to know that's good to know. Look what you learned today. <laughs> Information share. Well, that's good. Hi, my name is Emma. So, my question pertains to the energy sector and how organizations are essentially changing and how that affects recruitment. So, you did mention that um, the energy sector is changing. That was the first thing you mentioned, right? So, my question is. How is it affecting your recruitment in general? So is that something? Is there something new applicants should know? So, for example, a um, certain training has been affected because uh, existing employees probably will need to get trained on new curriculums, new policies, and whatnot. But is there something that new applicants should know about? Is there something we should, in terms of our existing training, our existing skill levels, that we should take into account? In that thought, when before applying, you know, something that goes yeah, actually. If, if I could jump in, we have training organizations here in the exhibition space. That is a fantastic question to ask them after our our program, and they'll have some really great information on the type of training that will help you. So, and I think as as an energy sector, you know. We're evolving, we're changing in the sense that um, from a safety perspective, you know, what we expect and what we provide um, for due diligence, you know, this, this concept of ESG, right, our uh, social environments, thank you. Um, so looking at, uh, at uh, being accountable, right, and, and when you look at um, how things happen, especially in, in Canada, you know, it's not just you can just go out and drill a well and produce a well and what have you, right? There's a lot of um, uh, compliance that needs to happen, uh, licensing that needs to happen, right? So when, when you're talking about evolving and advancing, uh, it's, it's about technology, it's about, you know, being responsible, right, to, to our planet, to, to our country, to, to the environment that we work and operate in, right? And, and being responsible to the communities that we operate in as well. So it's, it's not just one thing, it's, it's basically as, as a whole, as um, an industry as a whole, and other industries are doing the same thing. We're, I mean, we're, we're being more accountable and holding ourselves more responsible for how we conduct our business, right? And, and the, 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 the footprint that we leave behind um, and how we you know, work with and, and deal with in the communities that we work and operate. So I think that's where that helps. Yeah, it does? Okay. We'll take that as a win. Thanks. I, would, I think the only thing I would add that's a trend, it's not a trend, it's here to say, I have to say this right you know? Um, is to read up on ESG, which is environment, social, and governance, and what trends that the oil 
industry is looking at right now, just, just to get you familiarized with where we're headed. Yeah, is that fair? 100%. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, okay, Mike, there's more questions. Hi, this is Dr. Mark. My question is regarding professionals from newcomers with no prior community and experience. So the question is, do really companies have any kind of processes, mechanisms for fast tracking professionals? When I say professionals, uh, it's like 10 plus years experience within the oil and gas. Um, you did mention the management training, uh, training program, but I believe, unless my understanding is wrong, it's still an entry level. Um, I think, I do I will speak for myself, like I think we all kind of accept the idea of stepping back a little, you know, to, to get back on track. Um, but personally, at this stage, I don't see myself going back completely entry level, which means, you know, uh, I did the field and then progressed from there on. So I don't think I will go to <laughs> running, you know, while I'm operations again. Um, so what, what's, what's in there, you know, for, let's say, professionals? So, yes, as wireline, yeah, you need to reduce, and I think that's the other thing to think about, is when you've worked in the field and you've gotten that experience, and it, it is very transferable, um, and it is, you know, there are a lot of companies that are not just hiring entry level, right? We need to take a look, you know, LinkedIn is a great resource, take a look and see who's hiring, uh, basically you can do a search for your background and so forth. Networking opportunities just like this, right? Um, talking to career companies, um, that again that are networked and, and, and like that, that's one reason why I think all of us are here is because this is an opportunity for us to also access a pipeline that we normally wouldn't be able to access. That we again it's a direct direct link for, for us to have that opportunity to, to work with people and to engage with individuals that are that are again that we're having this conversation. So I think it's it's about your network and different associations that are out there talking with people. Um, it is a challenge. It is really, really difficult because there's you know, there are a lot of jobs out there, but there's also a lot of people applying for it, and we always say that we're always looking for people, but it, it is about who you talk to and the bridges that you build, um, and I guess the referrals that can be useful, right? It's you know, guiding you down maybe other, other paths um, of other opportunities out there. And it's don't give up. Right? That's the hardest part, it's don't give up. It's, it, it's out there for you. Um, you know, maybe you have someone take a look at your resume. Maybe you have someone take a look at, at, at you know, where are some transferable skills are. There are associations and groups out there that, that can provide that service for you so that you can, again, when a person's looking at your resume, those keywords are, are there so that they can connect the dots with the opportunity that they're looking to fill. So it, it, there's lots of, of, of resources, like I said, um, and it's just a matter of capitalizing on it. And I do believe that you know, here in this building, there's a lot of expertise that's associated with that as well that can help you with that. And, uh, and a lot of, of uh, other organizations are often profit as well that, that are there to, to assist you know, people coming in and trying to, you know, like get in at the right level of competency that uh, we've already developed. So, but just persevere. We'll go back to our Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah, you'll go back to our own door. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Kay. My question goes this. Um, I usually see this clause in most of the job adverts. They say, oil and gas experience is an asset. Now, how do we start a chain see if we got no oil and gas experience? I've got some experience, but it's not oil and gas. I've got experience in IT uh, and related activities in the food industry, but not oil and gas. So, do we sign the chains? How can uh, application be competitive when we're competing with people with oil and gas experience? And another question I want to ask is, I don't know what the websites we're talking about, so where we get the management training option. I want to find, I didn't find any management training option on Flint's website, so I want to ask where can I get that thing? Sure. So, hello. So we have a we have management training programs uh, positions open. They're not open all of the time. But it is, we are advertising for, for roles. 
Um, just to clarify, so your what I heard is that you have is cooking experience. You're, you're in the food industry and you want to get into the oil and gas industry. So we have, and, and that is on our website, it is called the Emerald Training Program. Now, you have to want to be on a rotation. You would have to want to be working seven days on, seven days off, um, flying in to Fort McMurray and flying out. We have an Emerald program where we take individuals that have zero experience. But what we're looking for is, you've said it many times, is energy, positivity, um, somebody willing to, wanting to learn. Um, we will take individuals, offer free training. Um, there's a location in Red Deer, I believe, in Fort McMurray, uh, which is free training. If you pass that, we will actually employ you and put you to work on one of our client sites. So that is also on the website. So, um, you know, I encourage you to come, come and talk with me. Um, we have hired many, many in the Emerald program. Um, in fact, there was a female that worked in recruitment. Um, how could she leave me? Um, she is now um, going through that Emerald training. Um, so leaving corporate, going to operate a heavy equipment, 797, look that up. They're the size of a house. Um, she is gonna be operating that. She's graduated and I'm so proud of her. Um, she is now a heavy equipment operator. So from recruitment, corporate, zero experience running this machinery, went through the training that we provide for free and is now working on one of our client sites. So again, ask the questions, um, call us, come and, come and chat with us, but that is also on our website. Yeah, and I think that one little sentence that says, well, and gas industry experience is an asset, you know, that's in there, but the reality is it's an asset, right? So um, look at the job description, look at where you feel that you have some transfer skills, and then again, tailor your resume to that application. Um, you know, the other piece of the, the puzzle is when you apply to some of the companies, they basically do a word search um, and flag your, your resume. So when you have the proper suited resume to the app, the application, it really will help as well if you feel that is a good fit for you. And again, it's it's about looking at the opportunity and making sure that you feel that you could do that job and why it is that you could do that job, even though you don't have any oil well field experience. So if you feel that you can do that job based on the description that's there, then again, tailor your resume and highlight those areas that you feel that are, are uh, in sync with that, and then again, hopefully take advantage of that. So. But yeah, companies like Flint that have their own programs where you can actually go in, train, and learn. You know, the larger organizations can facilitate that, and that's that, that there as well. Look at those types of organizations that will actually look and, and take some transferable skills and help develop you with my, from the, uh, the, the uh, point of entry into your organization, so. Um, unfortunately, I can feel Pat behind me, and we are out of time, um, but, Thank you, Center for Newcomers, for hosting us today, and thank you all of you.